Here is Horde. She is a walking fortress. Actually, no, she's a standing fortress. Wait, fortresses are already stationary, so that's kind of redundant. Anyways, Horn came with the release of Chapter 10, and everyone's raving she's one of the strongest ops in the game. But why? That's what this video is for. Why do you think I made this video? Horn is a fortress defender, meaning she can launch range to AoE physical attacks at enemies. She has a very high attack, with it going up to 1000 at max level and trust. This very high attack comes at a cost of an extremely slow attack interval of only 2.8 seconds per attack, which is almost as slow as splash casters that have a 2.9 second attack interval. Horn is also a lot less tankier than her other defender friends. She has less HP and defense than standard defenders, but it's alright since she can still tank a lot of damage. Even though Horn is a defender, you're not going to be placing her on the front lines to absorb enemy hits. Instead, you want to take advantage of her long range AoE splash attacks as much as possible. And there's two reasons for this. Placing Horn at the front of an enemy wave makes them get closer to her, so she won't be able to launch her ranged attacks because of the gap in her range. What's even worse is that if Horn blocks an enemy, her basic attacks are not AoE, so she'll have to chunk them down slowly one by one. And since she has a long attack interval, you'll be missing out on a lot of damage just from her blocking one or two enemies. Horn's first talent, Military Fortress, gives all defenders, including herself, 20% more base attack when she is deployed. This first talent is already pretty crazy, simply because 20% is a big additive for a talent. Horn already has extremely high attack, so the talent gives her even bigger damage. What makes it better is the defender branches slowly expansion into more damage. Operators like Blemishine, Mudrock, and Eunectus can all benefit from this 20% attack buff, especially since they're damage-oriented defenders. Horn's talent can also benefit healer defenders by making them heal more. Horn's second talent, to the bitter end, essentially gives her a second life. When she dies, she doesn't, recovering all her HP but reducing her max HP by half. Horn will gain 18 attack speed and 18% more defense. You can tell this talent is active by seeing one of Horn's eyes doing the Sans Megalovania. So on top of an already high attack stat, Horn gets more attack speed and defense. The defense lets her survive stronger hits, and that attack speed will let her fire off more rounds. These two talents are already pretty nasty when comboed with her skills, so let's go look at those. Yeah, but honestly, it's a bit unfair that everyone else has legs while I don't. Oh, hey, what's up, Horn? Bagpipes cranking 90s on you in an unnamed FPS game? Well, have you tried this unnamed game about clicking circles on screen rhythmically to a beat? I've heard it can improve your aim. Illumination Grenade, which is Horn's first skill, is an auto skill that can hold two charges. Horn will deal big damage on her attack with an increase in AoE if the attack is ranged. The splash will remove invisibility from enemies for 8 seconds in the area she shot in. The skill is pretty amazing for consistent AoE damage, with Horn cranking 3000 damage if she's max level with S1M3. As for the invisible revealing part of the skill, it's actually a very useful niche that not a lot of operators have. There are only 4 operators that can reveal invis enemies, which are Silverash, Elysium, Scene, and Tsukinogi, but it's more like 3 ops because really, who is a Tsukinogi? Horn is a nice addition to this niche, and her condition for revealing enemies isn't too bad. She just has to shoot at the enemy. Oh. That's the issue with this skill. Horn has to shoot the illumination round in order to reveal the invisible enemies, but she can't shoot at the invisible enemies in the first place since they're invisible. If Horn was in a map with only invisible enemies, then she would never be able to get to actually blow her load. <laughs> She would never be able to actually get that big damage in. 
Thankfully, that's usually never the case since she can just shoot at a visible enemy in her range. The skill also only costs 5 SP, while the reveal lasts 8 seconds, so if Horn is constantly shooting, she will always have the reveal in her range. Overall, it's a good skill for consistent damage with a niche that can come in handy in certain situations. Horn's second skill, Storm Order, is an overdrive skill. If you don't know what overdrive skills do, these skills basically have additional effects once they're halfway through the duration, indicated by a red skill bar. In this case, Horn has an ammo skill, so she'll get the overdrive effect when she's at half the ammo. Storm Order gives her 10 ammo and makes her attacks deal big physical splash damage. The overdrive effect lets her deal an additional 60% arts damage when she has 5 ammo left. The skill is cancelable, like with every ammo skill. There's a tiny condition on this skill that when you cancel during her overdrive, Drive, Horn launches all her ammo at once at the cost of 60% of her HP, nuking the enemies out of existence, which is really fun to watch. Again, it only works when she's in overdrive, so if you cancel it when she has the normal rounds, she won't lose her HP or do the nuke. The skill is the least used out of her kit, but it still comes with a lot of quirks. First off, unlike her first or third skills, Horn's melee attacks with the ammo are actually AoE, so she won't be missing out on a lot of damage if she's blocking an enemy. Melee Horn is pretty viable when the skill is active, but the downtime usually prevents the full use of a melee horn. By spamming the overdrive nuke, you can also quickly get Horn to purposely proc her second life talent, which increases her DPS output. Horn's main skill, her third, increases her attack, reduces her attack interval by 1.8 seconds, making her attack interval now 1 second, and it also comes with an overdrive effect. During overdrive, Horn will get an even bigger increase in attack, but at the cost of losing HP per second. This HP loss is similar to Sutter where it will linearly increase, but Horn's HP loss caps at 12% per second, so it's not as punishing as Sutter. This skill can be manually deactivated, which gives you a lot of control over where her HP is. If you want to force Horn to proc her second talent for more damage, you'll have to run the full skill duration twice in order to get that 18 attack speed bonus. Anyways, how much damage does this skill do? For reference, Aya's total damage on her third skill is only about 52,000 on a single target, but Horn's total damage on her third skill... Oh boy, it's a fat 56,000 without the attack speed bonus, and it's 68,000 when that second talent is triggered. The difference between Horn and Aya is that Horn doesn't have a nasty 90 SP cost that Aya has. She only needs 35 SP. If this sounds like I'm comparing Horn and Aya, don't worry, I'm not insane enough to do that, I'm just using Aya's numbers as a reference so you can get a general idea of how much damage Horn does with this skill. She does a lot. Overall, Horn's kit is literally built around doing as much damage as possible as a fortress defender. Her talents give her an insane amount of attack, and purposely activating her second life talent gives her more attack speed and defense. Skill 1 is obviously used for consistent damage, aka AFK gaming. But the difference between skill 2 and skill 3 can be a little fuzzy for some people, which is understandable. Both have great damage, but skill 3 seems to be the winner because of how much total damage it can do. It's not that simple though. Sometimes Horn's third skill doesn't cycle fast enough, and if you cancel the skill, you'll wind up doing less damage than if you just used her second skill and immediately nuke when Horn hits overdrive. These situations may seem a bit niche, but they can happen more often than you think. For masteries, if you're poor and want to save resources, you should go for S1M1 for the lower SP and S3M3 because S3 is just insane. If you're willing to invest a bit more, go for S1M3 instead. I don't see what's wrong with having a policy that removes everyone else's legs, it just be more fair to me, you know? Oh, hey, what's up, Horn? Oh, nice job clapping bagpipe back. Also, you're the number one player in the unnamed game about clicking circles on screen rhythmically to a beat? Wait, how'd you improve so much in like, 30 minutes? Alright, so where has Horn been used? Let's start with her most well-known clear, which is the Risk 38 CC Deepness clear by Project Arc. In this clear, Horn is used to snipe the left pocket crawlers. Because of the added risks, the range of the AoE arts damage the crawlers release is very wide, so Horn's long distance range saved her from essentially killing herself. What's pretty interesting is that in this clear, they purposely placed Horn when the middle crawlers triggered their last damage proc, almost getting rid of Horn's entire HP bar. The Screaming Flower Guy was then 
used to drain her elemental bar, forcing Horn to activate her second talent. This tactic lets Horn get even more damage in without having to go through the two cycles of her S3, saving a lot of time. At the end of the run, Horn's long range comes in handy again as she nukes the last 7 crawlers with Auk and Magalyn supporting her. There's also this interesting 5 step low step clear of the invitation to wine annihilation. This specific annihilation has that one Weregeist enemy that makes the enemies around it invisible. Horn S1 is perfect for this map because of her AoE big damage and reveal, letting the other operators get their attacks in. The 8 second reveal lasts long enough for Horn to consistently fire more illumination grenades, making sure all invisible enemies are revealed. In both these clears, Horn's long range and AoE trait that come with her branch are essential to her usage, since she can be positioned where lots of other operators wouldn't work. Pairing the long range with her damage, Horn is used to launch artillery strikes from across the map and not get punished for it. Anyways, that's about it from me. Goodbye. Damn, this is a really nice setup you have going. I don't really see how this helped you improve so fast, though. The chair? Oh.